Hello everybody, this is Cichlid Shane. Um, this video is going to be on the life cycle uh, for the nitrogen in your tank and uh, how does it work and how um, if you do the right things you can um, reduce the number of water changes you do um, and in some experimental cases uh, eliminate them to a certain degree. So um, let me zoom out. I found this uh, handy dandy chart online that gives you the a process for um, how your fish tank uh, environment works. So um, basically you can see the food you feed your fish comes in here and then it's going to go down. The fish are going to eat it, the fish are going to do their thing and that's going to create ammonia. Okay. There's also going to be decomposing plant and animal matter in the bottom of your tank that some will be converted and some won't and that will create ammonium and then there's some bacteria that convert the ammonia these nitrosomonas that will convert the ammonia to nitrates and then this other bacteria nitrospira will take the nitrite and convert them to nitrates and this is where a lot of fish tanks kind of end as far as the process goes. They um, either don't have plants um, or they, they can't have plants because the fish potentially uh, would eat them. Now there are ways around that um, having some type of a refrigium or a sump with plants in it um, that kind of thing. So if the nitrates are in the water the plants take them up and um, the plants also deal with some uh, ammonia processing and then they would d then deposit it uh, back into the uh, plant bed. The other way is to actually do a water change which actually doesn't it's not removing nitrates it's just um, taking some out and diluting the ones that you have so in essence um, it's uh, more of a dilution than anything uh, else. So that's the basics um, of your life cycle for your fish tank. Um, now that's why you know when you go to choose fish, you have to consider you know how much food do they eat, what types of food do they eat, are they messy eaters, or, or, you know that kind of thing. Their their you know metabolic rate, and uh, that's one of the first things that uh, people do when uh, you know when they start making mistakes is they overfeed their fish, um, and they don't let the other pieces of this environment catch up to handle that. That's why you should always add your fish in groups. Say so start with a few, let the tank cycle, add a few more, let the tank cycle again for a few weeks, and until you get to the number of fish that you want for your tank, you know, taking into account the end result for fish size versus the volume of your fish tank. Um, now you can, like I said, add sumps, refrigiums, other kinds of external pieces to help um, remove the nitrates. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, attachments you can get. You can get denitrifiers. You can make your own denitrifier with a, like a, a coil where it uses bacteria that um, don't uh, don't have uh, very little uh, oxygen in the water, which allows them to remove the the uh, nitrates out. Um, at a very very slow drop you know per minute rate um, but that probably won't allow you to eliminate water changes uh, overall now some people just through the process of evaporation and putting uh, water back in the tank um, could alleviate some of that but I haven't done the research yet to uh, find out if I'm um, just simply changing five gallons a day due to evaporation is going to affect your nitrate uh, levels. Now on my fish tank I have a refrigium set up. Let me pan around to that and uh, you'll see that my overflow comes in here and the it goes in the top here and then it flows down and around and into this side of my refrigium. And it goes over, goes through where I have plants and algae. Some I even have a little bit, a couple ghost shrimp, some plants, and then it goes back over here 
and then back up and into the tank. So I've been using that setup because these uh, cichlids, these mumbas, will pretty much eat the plants that you put in there, dig them up, that kind of thing. So um, at that point I simply had uh, either water changes or a refrigium option to do. So that is uh, the solution that I came up with. Um, you will have algae and such you know, that will be in your tank that will help with this process and you need to give it time to establish. Um, same thing with you know if you have sand beds and I would recommend doing some research on sand beds because uh, you, there's different thicknesses for the, and depths of the sand, different granular uh, pieces of sand and you want to choose the one that's going to work best for the fish you have um, and what you're trying to uh, get out of uh, that particular substrate. So in my case the uh, Refrigium is working pretty well so far. Um, I've got quite a few fish, probably 40 or so, and um, my nitrates and nitrite levels and my ammonia levels have been pretty much zero. Um, in the beginning I had a little bit of nit nitrate, but that's tapered off to zero since I added the um, refrigium and it's got it going and I have the light going uh, 24, 24 hours a day, so um, that bacteria those that algae and those plants all assist in the uh, de, uh, the nitrogen cycle as far as getting it out. Now I do you know have to do uh, a water change every uh, so far every uh, two or three months I do a, a little bit of a water change maybe 20 percent and I can do that just by simply um, taking some water out of the refrigium and letting it pump some water back in and it's pretty easy. Um, I will be doing a video on a do-it-yourself um, water top-off uh, that I'm probably going to be uh, using a design that's already online and just build it and kind of document that project. But um, again, that is the nitrogen cycle. So for all those, if you guys have any comments or questions, um, please let me know and I'll try to make a video talking about that. This is Cichlid Shane. Have a great night.